for now, you mentioned the New England Patriots, the man who coached the team for 24 seasons, available to be hired by anyone in the media and has been. We'll talk about that coming up as well. For now, though, yesterday was the day, and it happened during the show, the ESPN perfunctory hashtag long read with all the reasons why Bill Belichick didn't get a job in the 2024 hiring cycle. And, well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say what I want because it's Pat McAfee's show? show yesterday yeah. took plenty of shots at their colleagues for the Bill Belichick report. So the biggest news in there, in my estimation, the first item we wrote, and I got a list of like five others I still want to get to from this very long article that has a lot of good stuff if you look closely for it. And if you can get through the paragraphs that don't really say anything, your payoff is you'll find a paragraph that says something. And that's kind of how long reads go. It's, it's, it's an art form that I don't think anybody really cares about, but they still create long form articles for whatever reason. I just want the information. And the top information in the article was that Robert Kraft, the owner of the Patriots, when contacted by Arthur Blank, the owner of the Falcons, to discuss Bill Belichick after an initial meeting where going into it, the thinking was Belichick and Blank are meeting together alone with no one else around. We know how this is going to end. We know where this is going. We know that somebody's getting the keys to the super yacht and it's going to be Bill Belichick. Well, Arthur Blank does his due diligence talking to Kraft and Kraft, according to this multiple thousand word article published yesterday by ESPN, Kraft says he can't trust Bill Belichick. And I mean, that's a like stop the press big deal. Uh, huge. In my mind. It is. Yeah. That, that, that is a that is a tough thing to hang on a guy. Yeah. So you better, you better. And and I come at this from the perspective of someone who never had any journalistic training, but has learned through trial and error for 23 years. More error than trial. But over time, I have learned where the lines are and where you need to have that instinct that tells you you probably haven't nailed it down just yet. You probably need to work on it a little bit more. You probably need somebody who is in a better position to tell you that's what was said. And I say that because the sourcing for this claim yeah. that Kraft told Blank you can't trust Belichick or words to that effect. The trust word was key and it was be careful trusting him or you can't trust him, whatever it is. It's an issue of trust. Yeah. And Kraft says you can't have it in Belichick. A source who spoke to two other sources. And it was like second, third, it was. fourth hand. Yeah. It was the, I've right. never seen anything like it before. I've never seen it articulated that way before, where it was that attenuated from the people who supposedly had the conversation. And and if, I, I'm telling you, if we had done that, we would have been fed poisoned crab cakes by somebody. <laughs> yeah. I, we never or if I, I mean, said you that. You would have been you would have been asking, said, where'd you get whoa, that? Hold whoa, on. Who told you whoa, that? Wait, whoa. check. Let me, you text me. I need to hear that. Right, right. right. No. I mean, <laughs> you would have been I, nervous I, I as hell. <laughs> I, I was blown away by it. Yeah. I was blown away by it. Right. That it is one of the flimsy for something that significant. It is the flimsiest sourcing I have ever seen. And I apologize in advance to Don Van Natta, Seth Wickersham, and Jeremy Fowler. They were the three names on the article. But I, I, hey, somebody's got the obligation to say. And maybe there was just too many cooks in this and too many editors. And maybe they wanted to get this thing posted before it's announced that Belichick's working for ESPN for the draft. Because if we wait a day, it's really going to be awkward if we put this out there. We better get this out. We just, we just made it. We just got it out there before the news was announced that Belichick's working for ESPN Plus and the Pat McAfee show for the draft. And I'm sure that had something to do with it because, because it's a lot more glaring if you start shooting arrows at the guy you just hired. So let's shoot the arrows. Let's empty the quiver before we announce it. And, you know, we got this one last thing and we don't really have it as firm as we'd like. And well, but screw it. This is the day we got. This is the day. This is the day to do the article. Time's up. What do you got? Well, it's a source who has a source who has a source who has a source who has a source. Ah, oh, that's it. We got to go. Let's go. Time's up. Type it up. Get it done. And 
And again, I, if you want to be upset with me, that's fine. Don't don't post a story that has that flimsy of sourcing and you won't have anything to get upset about. You won't have somebody who comments on how flimsy it is because it's flimsy. And I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm just saying I'm not prepared to conclude it happened yeah. based on something right. that flimsy. Right. Right. No, it, it, listen, it's rare. I, I would say that's the number one thing that jumped out to me when you read it. You were like, wait, hold on, wait, this is a source from a source, right? I like had to go back and read that, you know, once or twice the first time I saw it. And it's rare. I, I think it's perfectly legitimate to question that and for us to sit there and say that and go, yeah, we're not going to totally buy into this just because you three wrote this. And uh, yeah, we've never seen it kind of done this way. You know, where it's, it's always oh, this person told this person told this person. That's what we've heard. And, yeah, these are pretty strong things to say. Now, saying that, too, we know that these owners talk, and they do talk to people, right? And that group of people does have some connections, right? So, again, at this other side of the story, even though that's weird and flimsy, like you say, you know, I'm not so sure I'm ready to sit here and say, oh, I don't think there's truth to that. Right, because there's things that go on during this whole thing too in the article that you know I didn't know that were true that weren't out there and whatever else. So I went, well, they knew that and I knew that too, right? So I had heard that and you know from somebody that was a, a real source, kind of connected to the situation. So there are things that make you go, hey, wait, I I had heard that and believed that from somebody I knew, but yeah, yeah, an accusation like that that's pretty strong, and you usually see a little bit more of a hard line stance or whatever you want to say there about who they got that from. Now, the rest of it, and I'm not going to go through all the various details. You can go read the whole article if you have yeah. time and the inclination to do so. Right. But the rest of it tracks with what we had suspected. Yeah. That Arthur Blank wasn't prepared to deal with the turmoil that would have flowed from hiring Bill Belichick, even if you keep everybody else in place. And Belichick says, all I want to do is coach. Because as I said from the get-go, okay, you're talking about which receiver you're going to take in round four, or are you going to take an offensive lineman? You're going to take this guy. And Terry Fontenot, the GM of the team, has got final say. And Bill Belichick's rolling his eyes, harumphing something. And, you know, his power in this is to just not use the guy. Hey, I signed this free agent. I didn't really like him. Well, I signed him. I'm the one who has final say over the roster. So he buries him on the depth chart. That that was my first lesson in NFL dysfunction. A GM signing guys and the coach refusing to use them. That's what you run into here. When you have a guy who's used to being fully and completely in charge, he says, I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to do to get the job. Then once he has the job, he starts acting a different way. That's human nature. Sure. It's not an indictment of his character. Yeah. That's human nature. Right. He's going to revert to what he knows. Right. And, and he's going well, to swallow his opinions. You're drafting this guy. I wouldn't draft this guy. Well, I think this is the guy. Well, I wouldn't draft him. And he drafts him. It's like, well, now what am I going to do with this guy? Yeah. Well, I got to teach Terry Fontenot a lesson. I'm not going to use the guy. So maybe next time around, he'll draft the guy I want. That's the risk you take when you bring in the guy who ran a program for 20 years. Yeah, no, that, that is the risk. That's what scares everybody, right? You know, that's why, you know, in the article and we had heard, right, they li list your top five candidates, right? And nobody in management wrote Bill Belichick because they weren't going to have the same job maybe if Bill Belichick was there. So, duh. Yeah, wait, let me write the number one candidate is the guy that might fire me or my job becomes less than that. That's the guy I think we should hire Mr. Owner, right? I mean, come on. We know that makes no sense. So that's a little odd in itself. Yeah. That was the risk. That's the risk. I think that's what scared people about Belichick in general. I do think Belichick has self scouted thyself. He's smart enough to realize. And I do think that he is at a point where he just wants to coach football. Now, you know, does he stick his nose in and do that things? Yeah, that's the the risk you you run there with Belichick. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, I had heard from people in the process before any of this even came about that Bill was willing just to coach, right? He he that that was fine with him. He's at a point in his life where fine, we'll do that. And I think some of these organizations he was picking or talking to in a lot of ways or has his eye on he believes they're pretty good at picking players anyways. But, you know, again, I understand Rich McKay, Terry Fontenot, whoever else in that front office being a little weary about hiring Bill Belichick and having him come in and, you know, ultimately being the king of the organization. We've seen this movie so many times, though. A coach goes in and has some success and starts grabbing for power. That's sure. what happened in New England. He didn't walk through the door in charge of everything. 
He walked through the door as the coach and only the coach. And then you win a couple of Super Bowls and you're in a position to expand your influence yeah. and take over. Yeah. It is human nature. You disagree with the GM here and, and there and blah, blah, blah. His and, nature. Yeah, right. I, you, can't, you can't ignore that. That's why it's so important get, yeah. to, to, you know, this whole trust thing. Like, if you can't trust him and the thing you're, you're hoping to trust him on, is he just willing to right. coach? And is he, is, he, is he going to do this passive-aggressive right. or aggressive-aggressive thing where yeah. he tries to take over? And and why would any owner want that turmoil, especially for Arthur Blank, who's, yeah. you know, he's he's only got so many football seasons left, I as we you. all do. Right. But once you get into your 80s, you don't know how long it's going to be, and yeah. you want to try to get a championship. Well, and yeah. I, I would have a fascination with hiring the guy who took the trophy away from me. Of course. I had it in my of hands. Course. right. And he came and took it away from right. me, and he's available for me to hire. Right. Why the hell wouldn't I hire him? Exactly. Why wouldn't I fire everybody I have to fire to, to uh, fire to put him in charge? See, right. Arthur Black was trying to have it both ways. And if he just would have gone all in with, there's that word again, all in with Bill Belichick, you know, we, and I think he wanted to, but he didn't want to go through all the crap that he'd have to go through yeah, probably. to do it. Right. I, I I don't disagree there. And and you know you know again I I'm sure he's heard good stories about uh, Bill Belichick through Robert Kraft through the years too. You know let's get into that trust thing. That trust thing is a hey that's a major blow if true if real right that that really is right that'd be a low blow by Mr. Kraft and 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 using that language to an Arthur Blank. And I, I don't know how I feel. Well, I know how I feel about it. I mean, first off, let's just unpack this a little bit. Nobody in football or anybody that's been around football for the last 10, 15, 20 years, everybody knows that Belichick and Kraft have not been on the same page and there's a little issue there and whatever. Anybody. You don't, it doesn't matter what it is, right? There's also a common knowledge of, yes, Mr. Kraft, you know, wants to stick his nose in there a little bit, even in the football things. And, hey, like most coaches, right, Belichick, whoever it is, McVay, Shanahan, yeah, blah, 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 they don't always want to sit down and explain everything to the owner about every football decision and do that, right? That's part of it too as well, let alone, I think, you know, you know people in football, I know people in football it's gotten out there that, you know, the Crafts sometimes feel like they deserve a little more credit for the New England Patriots dynasty and that Bill gets too much credit and that there's a little bit of bitterness there. I think those are pretty common thoughts around the league with no matter who you talk to that in some way they've heard from a source or they've heard directly or whatever that they feel that way. And so it's not the greatest relationship as far as the way it ended and where they're at now compared to 15 or 20 years ago. Right. And I think there's that aspect. And, you know, I think what this paints is like, yeah, maybe it was a little more bitter than I even expected, or maybe Mr. Kraft is even a little bit more bitter than I really thought here in this situation. But that's a killer type of phrase to use for a head coach where I'd go, man, Bill Belichick, I don't know where the trust thing would be. It's like the least leaks or anything ever out of any great team we've ever seen. He doesn't ever tell anybody anything. He barely talks to the media, right? So, you know, from that point of the word trust, he's all about football and you can definitely trust him. But, you know, I don't know whether it's true or not. You know, Mr. Kraft obviously didn't feel that way, if true, that, that he said that to Mr. Blank. Here's the quote that was provided by longtime Patriots spokesman Stacey James to ESPN for this story. Robert steadfastly denies saying anything negative to Arthur Blank about Bill Belichick after Robert and Bill mutually agreed to part ways. In fact, Robert advocated for Bill to get the job. It would not surprise me to learn that owners sometimes lament to those close to them when their teams are struggling, but Robert Kraft never questioned Bill's character or trust when talking with Arthur Blank. Trust is important to Robert. He wouldn't have employed Coach Belichick for the past 24 years if he ever questioned his trust. That's the official statement from the Patriots. And, you know, I look at it in a more pragmatic way. Yeah. Now, and, and see, this, this assumes that another questionable element of this report is accurate because they claim that Belichick, number one, is due to make $25 million from the Patriots this year, and number two, there would have been an offset for anything he made from the Falcons. I'm not sure either of those is accurate as reported. But if there's any benefit financially to Robert Kraft 
for Bill Belichick to get another job, why would you stand in the way of him getting another job? Yeah. And the only reason to do it, it's that ultimate pettiness of, I don't want him to go be successful exactly. somewhere else. I already right. had to deal with Tom the Brady being successful. Yeah. I don't want him to be successful right. somewhere else. Right. Although I don't know why he would care because based on what he's seen the past five years, why would he conclude that Bill Belichick's going to be successful somewhere else unless he truly is only the coach? See, that's the dichotomy here. There's a belief, and I think it's justified, that he's the best game day coach yeah. that the NFL has ever right. seen. right. But he had completely lost his ability to properly draft, develop, acquire, and build a team. Right. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.